Four years ago, we were in the heart of the pandemic. Without understanding what to do and what comes next, I was pretty lost. I didn't really know what to do besides exercise, order Uber Eats, watch Netflix. So I decided to do one thing that I know pretty well, retail therapy. I decided to buy myself a pair of shoes. So that's exactly what I did. I bought these shoes. They came to me pretty quickly. If you take a look here, they look something like this, the Nike Special Field Boot, designed for the military. They look pretty cool. I was ecstatic when they arrived. But then something came to my mind. I was like, hold on, something's wrong. And I gave it some thought. The wrong color came. This entire time, I ordered a pair of brown shoes and in come these blue shoes. So I did exactly what I thought was best to do next. I called up my personal fashion consultant who happens to be my younger sister. I said, Celeste, what's good? Yo, what am I gonna do with these? Should I keep them? Do I return them? What comes next? She looked at me and said, Anthony, I like them. Why don't you go ahead and keep them? I said, bet, you're my younger sister. I'll listen to what you said. So I decided to keep them and not go through the lengthy returns process of waiting four to five days, ship them back, go to UPS. I just wanted the shoes now. Now, I know we're all in these positions at times in which there's some uncertainty. We order an item. It comes late. It's not what we ordered. The texture maybe isn't exactly what you thought it was. And you're also in the same predicament. In the world of e-commerce, we expect instant gratification in the touch of a button. We expect to have it right here, right now. But there are some industries that aren't well positioned and don't have the supply chain built to respond well to this. In 2025, we now live in the overconvenience economy. Within the touch of a button, you have everything at your fingertips. You want a date on a Friday night? Swipe right. Are you hungry? Have Postmates. If you want candles for that moment so the date is going well, you can order them on Amazon. And if you order in the next five minutes, they'll be at your doorstep in the next seven hours and 55 minutes. Now, as comfortable as this is, we also realize that we pay a price for overconvenience. There are some industries that don't have the flexibility in the supply chain to respond to this well. So what does that look like? Well, I can tell you, but let me first tell you why I started a career in retail. The answer is sport. I love sport. Sport brings out my best and I bring my best to the world through sport where it meets retail. I started my career at the Nike World Headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon, which I call the Disneyland for athletics. It was fantastic, and it was a college athlete's dream to be there to start and grow my career. I did the most unsexy jobs you could imagine. Procurement, operation, supply chain. It was far from ideal in a lot of people's eyes, but I loved it. I loved making things more efficient. So much so, I even had the opportunity to drive Simone Biles around so she can get to where she needs to go even more efficiently. I got to keep up the athletic dreams. I got to chase intramural championships, which I did win. Only one, but I did win. I got to go around campus and I witnessed massive dreams, athletes reaching their biggest goals, and even got to witness LeBron James opening up his brand new innovation center on campus. But when the pandemic started happening, I started looking at my role in operations, making things efficient, making things more effective. And I took a step back and I said, hold on, things are shifting. Everything is moving online. How are we able to respond to this? And there was a problem that nobody was talking about. A nearly $1 trillion crisis of returns. We don't see what happens to those products when we send them back for an e-commerce order. And it's such a complex process that in many instances, it's far easier for those items to end up in the landfill. The shipping, the processing, the refurbishment, the cleaning, all of these steps make it more and more difficult for retailers to handle this problem. So I started thinking about it really deeply. What could be done? Why can't we find a more efficient system at hand? The textbook definition of this is the linear economy. It's pretty straightforward. It's an opportunity where you take materials from the earth, make products, and then dispose of them. Unfortunately, far too often, that second step gets skipped. And a lot of things, as I just mentioned, go straight to a landfill that are in perfectly good condition because of myriad of factors. But what about a new way of looking at it? What about imagining a different way that is far more sustainable? Some of you may recognize this. 
as the circular economy. This is saying all of those existing items that already exist, how do we take them, refurbish, recycle, and extend their product life cycle so they don't just end up in landfills immediately? Now, there's no better time for the circular economy to be present than right now. And I'll tell you why. Meet Maria. Maria works at a returns warehouse facility in Texas. Her job is threefold to evaluate, resell, repair, or trash. Now, far too often, she can do her job to the best of her ability, but it's extremely difficult understanding that the volume of things that come through, she has to make quick decisions. And those quick decisions, most of the time, result in products that are maybes, billions of products that are maybes, end up going to landfills. Now, I guarantee you, Maria is not the villain here. She's working in a system that prioritizes cost savings and speed over sustainability. So we know that this is a problem. How do we actually take a step back and really understand how to fix it? You see, robotics, AI, and machine learning have completely transformed the way we look at fixing this issue. If we take a step back and understand that we can use computer vision to scan the product before it even gets back to the processing facility, we can take all that information. AI can analyze 1,200 data points in the moment, things that aren't even available to the naked eye, and we can choose how to route that instantaneously in the moment. Resell on a secondary marketplace. Recycle. Donate to someone who desperately needs it. And this is not a foreign concept. This is already happening right now. Companies who are embedding this technology into their returns process are seeing processing costs get cut in half. And most importantly, something that used to be a headache is now a competitive advantage. This is the future and this is how we're going to continue to move as we look on making sure we're all taking a step in this process of embedding a resilient supply chain. But let me give you an example of what's already happening. Here comes Patagonia. For years, Patagonia has been empowering sustainability into their entire business model. And I can guarantee you, it is their competitive advantage. With Patagonia's Worn Wear program, customers can trade in old products, get credit for it, and even shop refurbished and recycled items. Now you're probably thinking, this is never going to be the future of e-commerce. But I'm here to tell you the worlds of e-commerce and re-commerce are blending rapidly, faster than we can predict. And although this is a very small revenue for Patagonia right now, we're seeing such rapid growth that it's only going to continue being the future. And who's driving that lead? It's Gen Alpha and it's Gen Z. As a generation, they care more about sustainability than any other batch of consumers in history. Two out of every three of these consumers care so deeply about sustainability that they're looking to integrate it into all parts of their shopping experience. And it's only going to continue. I come from the millennial generation. And in my generation and previous generations, it was all about more, more, and more. These new generations, less is more. There's a few things we can take away on what we can do currently in the moment. Number one, take a minute to read those reviews. We all know we love the convenience of using a lot of these platforms at our fingertips. A lot of these same platforms have so much information at our fingertips, we can use them to our advantage every single day when making these decisions. Number two, giving feedback. Don't be the mooch who doesn't give any feedback. If you benefit from feedback from others while you're on these same platforms, if there are some things that you didn't expect, leave those reviews so everyone else can also benefit from your knowledge so the next purchase is even more seamless. And finally, ask questions. Brands are here to serve us as customers. And if we stand up for what we believe in, I guarantee you, they will make sure that they deliver that service. And I want to leave you with one last point because every microscopic adjustment that we make can have an outsized impact on bringing us closer and closer to a truly circular economy. We can turn complexity into clarity. We can turn waste into worth and we can all protect our planet. We can and we will solve this puzzle together. Thank you.